Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition and today I thought we would bring you a how to play of DC deck building game Rebirth and during this how to play I will talk about some of the differences because this one is different from any of the other deck building Rebirth games. They all have little nuances, this one is a whole Rebirth if you will of the game. So this is from Cryptozoic Games, do they give us the player count? There we go, Cryptozoic Entertainment right and this is one to four players and it's for ages uh, 15 and up play time i would say for each mission scenario at least an hour hour and a half and as you see i have it partially set up and there is a reason for that so what i'm going to do as we go through this is i'm going to keep making sure i reference the setup guide just to make sure i'm, I'm keeping you guys on track there is a little bit of setup for this game so, to start off with, you give each person two heroes, right? And I got some extra heroes over here on the side. The game comes with eight heroes, right? So you give, you either let people pick their heroes, but it also says you give them, each person, two heroes. That person flips it over, they look at the hero, they might want to read down here and see what the information is, what um, hero, hero action, special action that hero has. Um, for instance, we have Cyborg here. If you play two or more different equipment during your turn, move one or plus two power. Movement's a new thing for this game, and we'll kind of talk about that. So you just kind of go through it, and you decide who you want. You get rid of one card, right? And each player would get rid of one card. This one has, I guess now they're not newer Green Lantern. I mean, they're technically newer Green Lanterns, but Jessica Cruz and Simon Baz but you pick one, you get rid of the other person until everyone has their, their hero. Once that happens, you give each hero their little standee, right? This allows them to move around on the made board here. And you also give them, oh, I set Batman up here, a hand of starting cards. Now, if you've ever played DC deck building, you've seen these cards before, the basic punch cards. And these cards give you your power, right? So right here we have the plus one power, right? And you get punch cards. So you get six punch cards. Then you get some new cards that you haven't seen before. So you get the run card. Let's look at that one first. And this gives you two movement. So what you would do is you play this card and it allows you to move around the board. And we'll talk about that and how the board sets up. The other new card that comes in, or new card, not, yeah, it's a new card type. Um, is helping hand and what this allows you to do is it allows you to assist and it gives you a range or you could use the power well no let me go back so it allows you to assist it gives you the range and then the person can do anything that's on this card right anything that says on this card and there's other cards that do that so this is your starting hand you would go ahead and give each people each per, each people's each per, person blah, 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 Stephen can talk give them their six cards they shuffle them up, they go ahead and set them down. I think that's kind of out of camera. Um, and then they draw up a hand of five cards, but we'll do that here in a second. Now, everything's a little um, smooshed here because I one, it's, it's a more of a sprawling kind of setup. I'm also trying to get four players in, but I also wanted to finish up and explain the setup. So here's the setup. First, you put out the threat track, right? And this threat track, let me move this off for a second, actually has, this is the cooperative, and you can play competitive like the base games of uh, DC deck building. And you're just trying to see who gets the most points, who's the most victorious superhero. Um, but some people really don't like the competitive nature and they ignore it. But this comes with a cooperative side too. So you go ahead and put out what side you're going to use. We're going to say we're using the cooperative in this because it's the newer thing. You're going to take the... Uh, Threat tracker, this is the tra threat level tracker. And you go ahead and put it at zero. Next thing you do is you open up whatever scenario you're on. And we'll just go ahead and say we're on scenario one. There are eight scenarios in the game. You go ahead and take out the card. Any secret cards you don't wanna look at, I'm not gonna give away what that card is. I have looked at it at the end. But the scenario card will start you off with what some extra things to set up. So it tells us what locations to grab um, and what side 
So side A, side B. Side A, something happens at that location. Let's see if I can go ahead and grab one of these without making a, a, a big mess. So side A, as you can see marked down here, gives you what happened, what you could do at that location. Pay two power, move a target villain one space towards this space, right? So there's that, or the other one's kind of easier to show off like this. Or the other thing that you can do, or the other thing is side B. So if you look on here, we have Batcave, City Hall, and Police Station are all side B. Get my phone to focus like it's supposed to. All right, all side B. And those tell you what stack of cards to put there. And that means you go there and you can get these stacks of cards. Now these are newer cards too. Let's go ahead and set that down for a second. These are newer cards too. These are uh, basic cards, but instead of having, if you've played DC deck building, you have your kick cards that you can buy. They're a little stronger than punch. These ones do things like allow you to move around or you have power. I've found that I kind of really like the bat cycle. Um, so on the B side of the location, it tells you which card stack to put there. And basically you go there and then you can pay for that um, card. And so in this game, we have the bat cycle, the bat signal and flight. And we'll get into how you buy cards, but when the B side tells you what to do there. All right, now what else do we have to look at in this scenario? All right, so it also tells you main deck, add two super villains to stack two and five. And we'll get into that in a second, right? It says, when you beat this scenario, your character signature card one, um, did I read it wrong? Gain, let me read again. When you beat scenario one, gain your character signature card number one. And it says you could see the instructions in the book. So that is just telling you at the end of the game. So I will show you guys these right now, just because. So each hero has three uh, signature cards. And these are Aquamans, here's Batmans, right? Everyone has three. So all that is saying is, if you guys beat the scenario, all the players get this card and it goes straight into their starting deck, right? They get it in their starting deck for the next scenario, then they already have that card in their starting deck. All right. So the, the one thing that I said we'll talk about in a second is the main deck. So it tells you how to set up the main deck and that's why I haven't fully set up the main deck for you guys. And what it says is you take um, two super villains and add them to stacks two and five. Ooh, throwing my cards around. This is why I sleeve stuff. All right, two and five. So what you do, it tells you in the setup is you take the main deck, you go ahead and you put it out in five stacks, right? And they tell you your fifth stack's gonna be light one card. So you just kind of count them out or you can do the math and go, okay, this is how many are in each stack and then the last stack has a little bit less. But this tells you we take our super villains. So we have a set of eight super villains um, to start with in this um, game. Who knows what could come up in those scenario packs. You shuffle it up and you give stack two, one, two. You give stack five, one, two. So then that's everything on this card. So you've, you've put out the card, you've done everything you need to do on that card. Now, like I say, I keep jumping back here to make sure I don't mess anything up or I forget anything. Um, so we talked about all that. Uh, then you take your cards. I kind of skipped that a little bit. So it tells you which locations to use. It doesn't tell you where to put them. And how that works is you take the locations, you shuffle them up, you blindly set them out. You make sure you want to keep the side B's and the side A's facing up. They say do it behind your back or under the table. I just do it in front of me and I don't look at it. And you set out the five locations, right? Once you have those five locations out, you go ahead and you set out these location um, numbers, uh, number tiles, I forget what the proper term is, but the location number tiles, you go one, two, three, four, five. You start at the top and you go clockwise. Once you have that done, you go ahead and you put out the wound deck. And I know it looks like it's Batman's deck right now. It's because we're kind of smashed. You put the wound deck out in an area where people can use it. And wounds are just something that hampers you. They're worth nothing, right? 
They don't allow you to do anything. They just weaken your deck, right? So I call them wounds. Sorry, that's Marvel Legendary Bad Steven weakness cards. You take the weakness cards, you go ahead and you set them out. It's supposed to be in reach of all players. All right, once that's done, then you go into the prepping of your um, main deck. So when you go ahead and do the main deck, this is where it tells you to set out the five stacks. And then it tells you the fifth one's gonna be a little light. On the scenario, I guess we could have bounced back and forth, but on the scenario card, it tells you to put two villains in stack two, two villains in stack five. But as you go through the um, setup for the main deck, you also put always put two villains in stack two and two villains in stack five, super villains. These are super villains, right? And you put them in there. Now, so once you do that, then what you do is individually each stack, and I know I'm doing the number one stack, it's because, I don't know. So you, you shuffle them all up. You give them all a quick shuffle to make sure you get those super villain cards nice and mixed in there. I'm not gonna shuffle all of them because I already shuffled them all up, but I'll shuffle the decks that have the super villains just to kind of get them in there. And what this is setting you up for is you get at least go through one stack of cards before you get a super villain. You get another stack of cards, two stacks of cards and your last set of super villains. And it's gonna take you getting down to this last kind of area to hit your last um, super villains. So once you have shuffled them all up, you stack them, you don't shuffle them, you shuffle them individually. You go ahead and stack the five individual piles into one pile, and this creates your main deck of cards. So now we have our main deck of cards. Once we have that main deck of cards, we go ahead and we put them in the slots. And they call them slots because you got multiple cards in each slot. So slot one and then clockwise. So slot one, it tells you goes next to location one. We go ahead and put a card there. And we do that for every one. We put a card down everywhere. There, there. Are we not gonna get a card to help me out here? We'll go like that. Come on, give me a villain card. Give me a villain card. Nope, no villain card. So let's go ahead and see if we can give us a little more room here by moving uh, Batman down here. It'll allow me to talk more about these decks. So let's move Batman down here a little bit. It doesn't really matter. They have the same deck. I'm kind of looking at the camera too to make sure I'm kind of setting this up right. This is just to give everybody a little room. All right. So now we're fully set up. And now we're ready to play the game. So let's talk about how you win the game. To win the game, you have to beat five supervillains. You have to get five supervillains out. And the supervillain cards are marked. Um, I should have kept one out to show you, but um, you can tell it says supervillain on there. It tells you kind of, um, well, it's gonna be like this. We can use this as an example. Villain cards are red, supervillain cards are red, but this part's black instead of red. And it'll say supervillain, right? And you could tell, there's certain, they do special things, they're pretty powerful, things like that. So you have to beat five supervillains before this threat track runs out. So you go all the way up to five and then you count, you go to three. Once you're at five, you move this way. So what happens is when a supervillain comes out, the threat track moves up. The thing with the threat track is everything on the tr threat track is applied. So this first one at zero, I'll pick it up again, hopefully not mess it up too much. So you guys can try to see it, see if we can focus it in a little bit. It says ongoing, each time supervillain enters the lineup, increase the threat level by one, um, and it makes its attack against each player. Whenever a supervillain shows up, it makes its attack against each player. That's, sim that's the same as the regular deck building games. When you flip that new villain over, their attack goes off against everybody right away. But as you go up this track, both these apply. You go up the track, and then this applies, right? You go up the track again, and then this all this applies. Everything applies. Up the track again, there's nothing there. Up the track again. Once you get at five, it moves this way. And if you don't beat at least five supervillains by the time you get to three, you lose the game. So you have to beat five supervillains before it gets to three. And remember that your threat track, everything applies as you keep going up. Now, Steven was really bad, 
and you see this little tile, and there's lots of different tiles. I can't remember how many, but you have this tile. On your scenario card during the setup, it tells you, see right there, it says threat track. It says one to two players. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry, guys. I'm used to playing this by myself. All right. So it says if there's one to th two players, threat A to level two. And what that is saying is you take threat A and you put it on level two. So in a four player scenario, this would not be here. So we wouldn't have to worry about that ongoing, but I guess it's a good teaching moment. There are going to be times cards are gonna tell you to do stuff, right? It's gonna say things like threat level A um, to, wait, threat A to level two. And how that works is you have a whole bunch of these tiles and they have the number or the numbers, the letters down there. But one of the things to pay attention to is there's going to be things, it'll say on here things like add, and this is an ongoing, so it means it'd be ongoing, but it'll say other things like, uh, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it'll be like take away, do this, do that. But this says add, so what that means is even if it were to go to three, it is added, so both those effects happen. Sometimes it goes over the effect like that, replace, I think it's replace, and then sometimes you get no effect at that level. You block the whole effect out. And that's your scenario card. So part of your setup is this scenario card, so you open that early on. But as I said, for our setup, I did four, so we wouldn't have that. All right, so back to it. So you play through this, first person goes, they have a hand of six cards, right? And they take five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we go ahead and we look at the cards and everybody can know what cards you have because you work together. So it looks like I have three moves because I didn't shuffle it up really well. I have one power, one punch, it gives me one power. And then I have an assist in one power. Now, if someone else had an assist, they might be able to help me um, if I needed it, that's why you can talk and you talk about your hands. But on your first turn, let's go ahead and take Batman, you can decide where you're going. Now, you have your locations, but slots are also considered locations. So for instance, this move two, this would be one, two movement, because it's a move two. I just realized what I did with those cards there. All right, let's go like that. So it's a move two. But when it's your first turn, first time you're getting on the board, you can pick where you go on the board. So I look at my cards and I'm like, wow, this is a horrible, horrible hand. I have two points and I go, hey, look at that, right? The um, bat pack is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and set Batman right there to start off with and I'm going to use my two points. I have one with the punch and I have one for, I can use it as, as an assist, helping hand, or I can use it as one power. So you guys can see all right, those cards. So Batman's gonna go ahead and say, I am going to go ahead and play these two cards. I'm going to buy this card, which means a new card comes out. And you go ahead and set it in that space, right? And then from there, you can decide and you make yourself a little discard pile. I know it's kind of off camera, but what can I do? Then from there, you could decide to move. I might decide I want to get over here and on my next move, hopefully buy a Batmobile or a Bat Cycle. I like the Bat Cycles. So I would spend one of these cards and I would move over here, all right? And then if that's the end of my turn, these are cards I'm just not using. I go ahead and put those in the discard pile and I draw up to five cards again. One, two, three, four, five. And this is my next hand of cards. And then the next player goes in clockwise order. So this is all about playing these cards. You either buy things and beat villains based on your power level, or you move based on movement. And then there's special abilities. You have different things like equipment, you have superpowers, you have superheroes, you have um, villains. That's the one thing that's not on here, and you have villains. So you basically play your cards to move around the map and to buy things to make your deck a stronger deck. Now, there's one more thing I kind of want to point out with this, and I'm going to have to kind of grab some of these cards to find one. And you guys, I guess, can see some of the cards. When I was playing this by myself, I kept getting super villains like right off the bat. All right, well, we're not going to use uh, Despero, but now you can see what a super villain card looks like. 
I'm looking for a regular villain card, and of course, because I'm doing this live, I have none. This would have been a great game to play because I would have made it pretty far uh, without, and of course, there's a whole bunch of super villains, though there's a whole bunch of super villains right there. I kind of want to show you guys some. There we go. So here's a villain card. We can go ahead and leave a super villain card out for explanation. So you go ahead and you go through this. If you get a villain card, right, there is a number down here in this lower right corner, right? And what that number means is, so let's say for instance, we bought that backpack, the bat pack, is that what it's called? Whatever. And poison ivy came out, right? And she landed right there. So she would go to replace that. So what happens here is you look at this number, that's her destination, right? So that means um, on certain go rounds, she's gonna wanna get to that destination, right? So let's say that we went and instead of the bat pack, right, we got, um, after the bat pack, we got poison ivy. So then it would be Wonder Woman's turn. Batman's shuffled all up. You always have to discard your cards that you don't use and draw a new hand. So Batman's turns over. He discards what he doesn't use. He draws up his new five, right? You're supposed to say my turn's over, right? They, they say that a lot. But you would resolve any effects that say at the end of turn. And then it would move on to Wonder Woman. So Wonder Woman, at the start of her, her phase, right? You look at any start of phase effects that happen. And if there is none, you move on. And then it says villains sharing a space with a hero. So if Batman was still here, they would attack, right? If Batman's not there, right? So if a villain shares a space, a destination with an active player, they attack, right? And they're only attacking that active player. They're not attacking everybody. So if Batman is here, they just attack Batman, right? If a villain is not, this is the beginning of your turn. If a villain is not um, in an, a place with an, a character, so Batman's not there, the villain moves one space towards whatever destination is on there. And for Poison Ivy, her destination, right, is number two. So she's trying to get to number two. Now what happens when she gets to two, is when she gets to two, then her attack, when it goes off, it goes off against all heroes. So if she gets to her destination, and let's say everybody's on the board at this point, everybody's running around, doing their thing, they're all over the board, right? When, I guess we can go like this so you guys can see them. <laughs> it's gonna make it a little bit of a problem, but when her attack goes off, Right? And her attack will go off at the beginning of every player's phase now because she's at her destination. She attacks the active player every time. Now the active player doesn't have to be in her spot. Once she's at her uh, destination, she will attack the active player too. So then you gotta resolve multiple attacks. Right? And that's how that goes. So at the beginning of a player's turn, they go through a couple things. Is there um, any starting uh, turns, a start of turn abilities or whatever you want to call it. Then they go ahead and the villain will attack, any villains will attack if a character is in their position or if they're at their location. Then if any villains who aren't in, already engaged with the character or at their location, they move one towards their location. Once all that is, go, you go ahead and do all that, then the player is allowed to play their cards there are five cards that they have in their hand. They're allowed to play them, to buy things, and to move, and to beat villains and super villains. You beat super villains and super villains the same way that you buy cards. They have a point value. You go ahead and spend that point value. Um, I guess I can show you one more thing. All cards have these. Is that star is if you're playing competitive. What it means is at the end is you just all add up your competitive points. So... Um, you would go ahead and play all your hands. And like I said, once your hand's done, you, you announce that your turn's over, right? You take all the remaining cards that you have, you throw them in the discard pile. You do any turn, end of turn effects, 
right? And any cards you've played, you also put in the discard pile, right? You draw five new cards and the next player goes. And you just keep doing that as you go um, round and round. And like I said, how the game ends up winning or losing is being able to beat these super villains. And how super villains work is when they come out, so let's go ahead and move Poison Ivy. Let's say that the super villain lands right here, Sinestro comes out right there. When they first come out, um, this he doesn't have it. Some have a revealed instead of just an attack and reward. Some have a revealed. And so when they come out, if there's a, re a reveal, that attack goes against all of your heroes. There are ways to stop it if you have cards that have the defense right there. And it'll tell you what you can do, and there's always special things that they do with defense. You can discard this card to block that supervillain's attack. But it only blocks for wh whatever character discards that defense card, not for everybody. But Sinestro also has a place that he wants to go. So if he shows up and he has a reveal, he attacks everybody, right? Then on a hero's turn, if they're at Sinestro's space, Sinestro attacks them. Now, same thing is if Sinestro gets to a location, right? And at the beginning of Superman's turn, even though he's not there, he's still going to attack Superman. And if there's a villain here, he's going to attack Superman too. So let's say Poison Ivy's here because he was trying to get into position to take out Poison Ivy, right? And Sinestro gets to his location. I guess we can go like this. I know a lot of card moving. On the beginning of Superman's turn, right, you would look to see if any villains are engaged with Superman. Any villain at their location or at that character's location are engaged with Superman. So you would carry out those attacks. And also, just a side note, for Superman to um, defend against the attacks, you'd have to have two defense cards. One person attacks, he gets rid of a defense card. He has to have another one for that second attack. Right, and on here it tells you what the attacks do. Now, one of the things that are also another thing that's different with the um, Rebirth version of DC deck building is when you beat villains and super villains, they go into a discard pile, right? And there's a reason for that. There's, let's see if we can put it like that so you guys can see it. There is a, um, or we can put it down here, I guess, discard pile. There are certain abilities that let you pull cards from the discard pile. There are going to be things that allow you to get rid of these starter cards out of your hand and discard them. And sometimes you're going to have to actually get some of the cards that you've worked hard and paid a lot to get out of your hand and throw them in the discard. And then there's a card, there's, there's abilities and cards that will let you draw something from this discard. So you have the discard pile. One of the things I would say I would do is with the supervillains, I don't put them in the discard, the supervillains. I kind of line them up because you're never going to be able to touch the super villains again. So I go ahead and line them up. The, the villains and super villains don't help you once they're in the discard. So I just line up the super villains so I know how close I am to um, ending this. Also, I just realized this if Sinestro had come out, our threat track moves up, and you guys are probably smart enough to catch on to that. So that's what you do you go around, you move, you buy cards, you assist other players if they need it, you fight villains, you fight super villains until you've beaten five supervillains, or the track has made its way all the way up to here. And there are eight cards. There's eight supervillains at least so far. They all go into your deck. There's a possibility you can get all the way there and not defeat all the supervillains. And that's how you play at least the cooperative mode. I'm sure there's some different things with the competitive, but if it's just like the regular DC deck building, the competitive mode is just you add up those points. That one's not going to have any points. Remember I showed you guys these little points down here? You add up the points. You can think of it as like bragging. If I can get this to focus. Brag off, 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 guys. You can think of it as bragging at the end. I beat up this many villains or whatever. So that's basically how you play Cryptozoic Entertainment's DC Deck Building Rebirth. I hope that made sense. I, there's kind of a lot going in to the setup. But once you start playing, it's pretty smooth. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. I'll see you later, everybody. Bye.